Hi, um, I'm Martin, Martin Walraven. Uh, I'm an open source developer on the Apollo team. And I'll be talking about uh, building native mobile apps with GraphQL. And you might be thinking, um, that sounds really interesting. Like we've been using GraphQL with web apps and now we're taking it to native. Um, that sounds interesting, maybe it's experimental, maybe uh, it's something new. Um, but in fact, this is the first, um, the first ever app that used GraphQL. This is a uh, fully native app. Um, it's been in production since 2012. Um, and what's interesting about this is that um, it, it was in the context of this app, the first sort of modern native version of the main Facebook app, that GraphQL was developed, was created. Um, so the team that was responsible for the rewrite, uh, the team at Facebook, um, actually came up with GraphQL as a direct result of thinking about sort of the best way of writing, a, uh, uh, writing an API for mobile apps. So it's no coincidence that GraphQL is a really great match for mobile apps. Um, and I'd like to um, tell you a little bit more about sort of why I think um, mobile developers should be really excited about GraphQL. Um, and sort of we know what the answer to the question, sort of what would a great mobile, uh, a great app for mobile apps look like is. Um, and if I would have to say that in one sentence, I would say it's, it's really the ability for clients to specify their data needs against those capabilities that the server uh, exposes. And imagine yourself sort of explaining this to uh, a mobile developer or convincing yourself as a mobile developer that using GraphQL is a great idea. Um, the first thing you might come up with, um, and this is again especially important for mobile developers, is that there's a great performance benefit to using GraphQL over something like REST. Um, so using GraphQL, um, allows you to avoid overfetching. Um, it avoids um, sending data that you don't actually need for your UI, um, which of course is especially important on mobile networks. Um, and maybe even more important, it avoids extra round trips. Um, so mobile networks in particular often have uh, fairly high latency. Um, so if you sort of first have to get data uh, and then based on that data, perform additional requests to get other data that you also need for your UI. Um, some of that can get pretty slow. Um, but I think right after sort of listing these benefits, um, it quickly becomes clear that this is just part of the story. So um, GraphQL is definitely not just about performance. Um, and um, I think one of the main benefits, and a lot of, a lot of other talks um, have um, mentioned these as well, is that it, it empowers and unblocks app developers. Um, and I think mobile teams in most companies are separate teams. They're separate from the back end. They usually sort of use, use different languages. They have a very different culture. Um, and um, there's often sort of a bit of conflict between the mobile developers and the back end developers. Uh, because from a mobile developer um, wants the data um, um, for a particular screen uh, or, 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 or flow um, as efficiently as possible. But backend developers uh, really don't want to write app or even app version specific endpoints. Um, so the idea of GraphQL is really that um, backend developers can focus on exposing those capabilities. They don't have to write endpoints and um, app developers can focus on what they're good at um, writing a great UI, um, and a, uh, they can use GraphQL to describe those uh, data requirements for the, their UI in a very convenient way. Um, one sort of other benefit of GraphQL um, that um, um, is even more important for mobile developers than for uh, web developers is the idea of continuous schema evolution. Um, so mobile apps, uh, tend to stay out in the wild for a long time. People um, don't always upgrade. They're not always able to upgrade because uh, they have old devices. Uh, they're not able to run the latest uh, OS version. Um, and it's also, maybe they're, they, they don't really feel like upgrading. It's a, uh, depending on your operating system, it's actually an action you have to take. Um, so you, you often have to deal with um, versions that can be sort of years out of date. Um, and if you, use a RESTful API, 
Um, that means you uh, sort of have to keep up those different versions um, and you have to keep supporting them or you have to drop support for older clients. With GraphQL, um, you can just keep uh, uh, evolving your schema and all the clients will, uh, will keep working. And in fact, at Facebook, um, um, the, the claim is that even uh, the original app from 2012 still runs against the same endpoint. So that's, that's quite impressive. Um, one really important point that I want to make for mobile developers is that um, adopting GraphQL doesn't require you to sort of rewrite your complete mobile app. Uh, it's quite easy to get started. So GraphQL, from the client perspective, is no more than a simple HTTP request in the common case. Um, and you can use any HTTP client uh, or client library to perform a request. Um, basically, you can treat GraphQL as an endpoint. Uh, the only difference is that um, you define the data for that endpoint on your client instead of on the server. Um, but the response you get back can be treated exactly the way you would treat a uh, response from uh, a REST a uh, API. Um, but of course, there's more you can do. And it's here that we've really learned a lot from the, uh, the Facebook teams that have worked on the mobile apps. The internal Facebook libraries in both iOS and Android have some really advanced capabilities. Um, and um, in the uh, Apollo community, we've worked on iOS and Android versions uh, of uh, uh, native clients that take advantage of uh, those same capabilities. And to start out, uh, there's the idea of uh, static type safety. So GraphQL has a great type system. Um, but the result you get back, in most cases, is JSON. And dealing with untyped JSON from a typed language like Swift or Java, or Java is, is a real pain. Um, you end up sort of having to cast, having to deal with errors manually, or you have to write uh, a mapping layer. Um, and it's a shame because you do have type information available in your schema. There's a clearly defined contract between the client and the server. So, um, I'll be showing this in Xcode, Apollo iOS. Uh, the experience in Android is, is, is similar. Um, what these native clients allow you to do is uh, generate code based on uh, your GraphQL query. Um, so here, for instance, um, the query that um, gets posted um, gets translated into a, uh, uh, into a data object. And every time I make a change to my query, so if I remove the title here, for instance, um, I get a compile time error. Um, I can be sure that the data I, uh, I try to sort of bind to my UI is actually there. Um, and it works both ways. So if I try to fetch data that isn't part of the schema, um, I get a sort of nice inline validation error. So this really improves the developer experience. You can. Um, um, and that's what I was referring to with sort of the idea of static type safety. There are other benefits, um, and I can't really go into too much detail here. Um, for those of you who are familiar with uh, uh, clients like Apollo Client uh, and Relay, um, know about normalized caching. Um, and this is a big benefit for mobile apps as well, especially if you, uh, uh, if you make the cache persistent. And it really allows you to sort of keep query results consistent uh, improve the performance of your app by uh, loading data from a persistent cache. Um, and it can also fundamentally change the programming model of your app uh, uh, when you switch from sort of model view controller to more one-way uh, one data flow architectures. It's, it's, it's really suited for that. Um, so I mentioned Apollo iOS and Apollo Android, two community projects. Um, we have uh, a great list of sort of contributors and users. Um, these are some of the people that um, um, are using these, uh, these clients. Um, if you're interested, um, please join, uh, join our Slack channel, uh, get in touch, uh, start using the clients, uh, open issues, uh, contribute, open PRs. Um, and I'm uh, looking forward to working with more mobile developers on uh, improving these clients. <laughs>